Hello everybody and welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to another episode here in the series. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factory. Last episode we went ahead and completed this little counting clock here as you can see. It kind of looks like a digital clock here and it does count from 0 to 9. So we've basically built out the functionality for any of our digits here inside of the uh, clock to, you know, react accordingly, right? All these different sections here have different live data associated with them and we tell them to either you know, appear selected or unselected based on what number we're trying to display. So if you missed it, check it out. The logic is kind of fun. But as you can see here inside of our view model, um, there's a whole lot of live data here. There's a, there's a list, there's a map here, uh, all, you know, all the logic to build out this screen. And unfortunately, it is the entire size of uh, the screen at the moment. So we're going to go ahead and clean this UI up to make it look a little bit more like a clock and then also uh, work to maybe create some manager classes and some reusable components here so that we can actually get this uh, single digit duplicated on the screen here a few times. So give me a second, I'll come right back and uh, we'll go from there. Alright everybody and welcome back. Made a few changes here and I'm just going to walk you through them step by step. So first things first, we've up updated our activity main here to basically include two different layouts here. Uh, previously activity main had you know this entire layout of just the single digit but I extracted that into its own layout file and then uh, included it twice here in the activity main so now we kind of have uh, you know two different digits here that can represent seconds let's say if we're gonna have this start counting up. Um, the main activity is a bit more bare and so is the view model here but you notice we have come up with two different variables here that are of the same type, the digit display manager. And so the idea behind this class is that it is going to be responsible for displaying information or representing the state of one individual digit. And you can see here that it has a lot of the same logic that we had previously uh, inside of our view model, but now we've extracted it into another manager where we can make multiple instances of this one class, and then we can eventually build uh, a UI here that looks like this with multiple. So really quickly here, you know, we are, instead of using live data, we're using a list of the IDs that correspond to the different segments in the UI here. Uh, this is a little bit of a trick. It is also kind of tethering things together uh, a bit more than you may like, but you know, for the sake of this example, it's going to work out just fine. Uh, and then we have basically the same idea here, uh, the on new digit function that generates a new state, which is a hash map or a map of integer to integer. We loop through again with our similar logic here to determine if we are in the selected or unselected state for the particular digit that's passed in. And then we post that map here to our uh, live data. And basically the idea is that the first integer here is going to be the ID that corresponds to the, um, the segments here. And then the secondary integer here is really going to be a color resource. Uh, let's see if it lets me do that. Yeah, it doesn't let me put it in there. Uh, which, you know, I guess is the end of the world, but that's basically what the two integers are going to represent here. So if we uh, bounce over to our main activity, we can kind of start to implement this a little bit here. So inside of our activity main, we have the two includes here, basically the layout seconds left, the layout seconds right, that represent the different digits here. So we can uh, connect these two things up here. So if we go ahead and say view model dot, let's go with the seconds left display manager. And then we look, take a look at its live data and we call observe. We'll pass in this as our lifecycle owner. And then this is going to be the map uh, that represents you know, the different segments and their states here. And so previously we had the function down here that would actually take in a material card view and style it accordingly based upon whatever data was coming back from our live data. Uh, so we have all that stored inside of our map here. So we are unfortunately going to have to do uh, the binding second left segment top dot root uh, set card background color and then we are going to have to resolve this color here context compat get color passing in this as our context and then we need to reference the correct segment here uh, inside of this map it's going to complain because it can be non-null uh, but you know we got it fixed up now uh, so maybe we can create a little helper function here to do this for us a little bit faster, a little bit better. Uh, so let me get that cleaned up and then we'll come back to it. All right, everybody, I've gone ahead and cleaned this up here. Thanks for sticking with me. Uh, so inside of our observer for the live data here, 
We call one function setup layout with new digit. We pass in the corresponding layout, uh, the binding there uh, that we want to modify, and then the map, basically the information that we have. And as we can see here inside of this function, we make a whole another, a uh, whole bunch of other function calls to basically style all of the card views within each of these layout, each of these bindings here. So uh, as we can see here, we say style, style card view. We pass in the correct card view that we're looking for and the value that we're looking for inside of the map, which again is going to be an unresolved color. Uh, and then inside of our style card view function, we basically just apply some info on our card view, we resolve the color, and then we set the background color of that card view. So these two functions here are, you know, helper functions. It is a little bit of redundant, you know, copy and paste. Uh, it is what it is, but it will uh, basically accomplish everything that we need, and it will just, you know, display the information accordingly as long as we propagate correct information inside of this map here. Uh, so we can go ahead and do the exact same thing here for the right uh, digit display uh, manager and whatnot. So let me just get that done for us real quick. All right, and there we have it. We've just basically done exactly what we do for the left digit here in the right digit, except we pass in the different uh, layout binding for the seconds right, which again maps to this one. Uh, versus this guy being the left here. So the UI here should be up and running. It is ready to observe all of our changes. So we can go ahead and kick this off by saying view model dot start counting. And now we just have to implement our start counting function here. Um, so very easily we can implement just some kind of, you know, a counter that will just count up. So we will say uh, var index equals zero then we will go ahead and basically update our different managers here and then update the index and uh, repeat. So the index plus plus, we will call a delay here for, let's go with, uh, let's just go with one second. And then uh, the seconds right display manager is going to be on new digit. It's going to be the index mod 10. And then the seconds left manager dot on new digit is going to be the index divided by 10 there. We should probably put this all in a loop here. So let's just go with a while true. So that just continues to happen. And I've been staring at this error here, wondering exactly what the issue is. Uh, however, obviously we cannot initialize our variable inside of the loop because then it will just get reinitialized to zero every time. Uh, okay, so that was a silly mistake, but otherwise here we have our right display manager getting the on new digit, the left display manager on new digit, and we're just doing a little bit of math here to figure out, uh, you know, basically what each one of those segments should be, right? So from zero through nine, we would expect the UI to look like uh, zero, one, zero, two, zero, three, et cetera. Uh, but then the second we get to 10, we would want to see 1, 0, 11 is 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, right, in the UI. So uh, the math that we uh, kind of came up with there should accomplish that. And as we can see here, now our clock here starts to actually just count. And we could see it as it just surpasses 10 to make sure that everything is the way that we would expect it. And so, yes, this is 100% uh, counting the way that we want it to. Could do a little bit of UI work here to clean up some of the... Um, you know, information as far as the way that it looks, but uh, it's working. You know, we are counting up here and we are basically accounting for the different, um, I forget the exact word for it, right? But uh, we are counting up with a base 10 uh, system here. Uh, and then obviously if we want to turn this into a clock, we would have to manage, uh, you know, 60 seconds for a minute and then 60 minutes for an hour and 24 hours or 12 hours, depending upon how we have the clock set up. So we're gonna go ahead and continue to expand this uh, in the future. Obviously, once we get to 100 here, it is going to just uh, repeat, which isn't necessarily ideal, uh, but that is the current flaw of the system. So if you made it this far in the video, I'd really appreciate a like. Thanks for sticking by. Consider subscribing if you have uh, been enjoying the content and or if you are brand new. And uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one. We're going to go ahead and just continue this digital clock uh, application. Thanks.